Roy Keane, probably Manchester United's best ever Premier League captain, right? Set the standards, led by example. And he's a man who's become very outspoken in his punditry. But Keane makes a lot of good points a lot of the time. So what I want to do in this video is take a look at some of the points that he raised after the Aston Villa 2-all draw. I would have done this video yesterday, but I wasn't in England. I'm back now, so please watch this video, take a listen to what Roy Keane had to say, and my thoughts and opinions on it, because I want to know where you stand. Which one, of, which one of these Manchester United squad, which players, which players would you keep? That's the question that's posed to Roy Keane. And I think it's a really interesting talking point. That's why I want to talk about it. So please, if you would, consider subscribing to United People's TV. But let's get straight into this one because there's nothing else I need to say. This is, this is what Roy Keane was asked. Go on, lads. How many would you rely on in that squad when you look at it right now? Oh, in the whole squad. How many would I keep, you mean? Mm. Who'd you build around? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. And the mere fact that Roy Keane has to do that and say that, literally head down, shaking, he has no idea. To the point where <laughs> names have to get thrown at him. And I think that in itself is extremely telling. And this is a squad, remember, that has so many top quality players on paper. But nobody that Roy Keane can really immediately jump to after that Villa game. That's telling in itself. But then he's posed, and the first player that's posed to him is Bruno, by the way. Bruno? Yeah, oh, yeah, Bruno, and people like Ronaldo. I'm not saying it's all doom and gloom. Yeah, Varane, there's some good young players there. But if you look He's obviously at the... not sure about the full-backs, is he? Obviously not. And, but, but of course, the new manager's coming. He might be thinking, I fancy the job. But I'm on about if a top coach comes in, at least for a good starting point, you might look at some of the senior players and go, at least their contract's up. I can move them on and get some fresh, hungry, quality players into Man United. Keen there, the three players that he names, Bruno, Ronaldo, and Varane. And two of those names are given to him. Loaded questions, if you want to call that. He just agreed rather than naming them. That's how little Roy Keane thinks, you know, in, in terms of respect. That's how little respect he has for this Manchester United squad, which is littered, littered with players that we know just aren't good enough for Manchester United. Or maybe they are, but their attitude is wrong. Because there's only so far that uh, talent can take you. We all know that. It has to be matched with the work rate and the application. So I think that the, the fact that Keane struggles, the fact that he only names three, it's, it's so damning. It's so damning on this Manchester United squad. Like that second half performance against Villa was. to go, No, last 30 minutes, if you want to call it that. To go from that 2-0 to that 2-2 two is is insane. But to focus on what, what Roy Keane said there, you know, that's my reaction to what he had to say. But for me, it opens up another question. What players would you be sad to see leave Manchester United? Because he's naming three there. And I'm sure there are more if, he, if, if, if Roy Keane had the, the squad list that I've got here and he ran through it and ran through and said yes or no as to whether he'd be, be sad to see the back of them, which ones he thinks that you could rely on going forward. I'm sure he'd name more than three. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a look at that squad and I'm going to highlight players that I would be sad if they left Manchester United. The players that I would like to keep out of all of that squad. I've already done keep or sell. I've already done a video on that. This is different. This is players I'd genuinely be sad to see leave Manchester United. And I really want to know who is in your list in the comments below. Let's get straight into this one. Off the back of Roy Keane's comments here. As I said, there's more I'm going to be discussing from Roy Keane's interview, by the way. Uh, I'm going to be taking a look at his comments on what we've got. His comments on the senior players who's setting examples. In fact, no, sod it. Let's go straight into it and read this part out before we do look at this list. This is what he said here when he was asked about the squad and what's going on, especially the problems with Marcus Rashford. He said, are the likes of Sancho, Rashford and Greenwood looking at senior players who should be setting an example? Maybe all of them aren't. Maybe the young players aren't that quick to do a bit of extra training afterwards. These are all the finer details for younger players to improve on. If the culture isn't right at the club in terms of the pace of the training, the tempo or the attitude, then you're going to notice it. There is something missing at United. There are too many loose ends. 
Lucens FC, Bagel FC, whatever you want to call Manchester United, were not the best football club in the Premier League anymore, not by a long shot. And Keane was the king of the standard setting, wasn't he, at Manchester United. I was heartbroken when he left. Really, really, obviously fell out with Fergie and everything that happened there. That interview with MUTV that we still have never seen. I'm sure it exists somewhere. Jeez, probably need it now. <clears throat> but it all just makes me think. If I was to take a look at this squad, genuinely, and I'm being honest, who would I be sad if they left? I would be sad if De Gea left. I know that I've said, I, I, I spoke about De Gea in depth, didn't I? And I said, look, I think with De Gea, it felt like the right time this summer for him to leave, for Henderson to come through. It just felt right. He didn't leave. Henderson got COVID. De Gea is now our number one again, and we massively need him this season. Massively. But yeah, of course I'd be sad to see the back of De Gea. Would I be sad to see Lee Grant go? No. Would I be sad to see Tom Heaton go? No. Would I be sad to see Dean? Oh, yeah, I think I'd be sad to see Dean Henderson if he left on a permanent deal. I don't think he will. I still think that at some point in his career, I think Dean will be number one for Manchester United. I still think he's he's a, a more modern goalkeeper. He rep, he reflects how football's changed. Uh, David De Gea, not as good in possession, brilliant shot stopper. Dean Henderson, a bit different. Uh, so I still think he's got a chance at the future, and I would be sad to see the back of him. But this is where I have to start being really brutally, brutally honest. And that's what I'm trying to do in this video. I'm being as honest as possible about this squad and my feelings towards it. I said this squad was likeable a while ago. But how opinions can change, eh? How opinions can change. If I was going down here and I would say, look, players I'd genuinely be sad to see leave. I wouldn't bat an eyelid if Victor Lindelof left. I think Victor Lindelof's been good for Manchester United, but I think he could be replaced by somebody else and I would have the same sort of affection towards him. The same goes for Eric Bailly. Both of them decent in their own rights, in certain performances, not as good in others. I wouldn't be sad if either of them left. I won't be sad if Phil Jones leaves. We all know what's happened there for a long, long time. I'll be sad for him that his career hasn't worked out today, but I wouldn't be sad if he left. Harry Maguire? No, I wouldn't be sad if Harry Maguire left at all. I think, I think Manchester United, well, we've, we've seen right now that he's not good enough as a captain. That he's not doing enough at all to warrant that 80 million price tag. I wouldn't be sad if he left. Would I be sad if Varane left? You're damn right I'd be sad if Varane left. One of the best in the world. The sort of defense, defenders that we should be building our future around. I'd definitely be sad if he left. Sad? Would I be sad if... No, I'm not... I'd rather... I... No, I don't think I would. Not with Diago Delot. That... No, I don't think I would. My own opinion there. He's a decent defender, but again, very, very replaceable. Luke Shaw. This one might cause a bit of uh, opinions in the comments, I suppose. All, it all does. It all, it all would. But yeah, I'd be sad to see the back of Luke Shaw. He was phenomenal last season. He was brilliant for England at the Euros, but his form has dropped off a cliff. Very reflective of Manchester United, I think. I'd definitely be sad to see the back of Luke Shaw. But at the same time, I understand why he's not in the starting eleven right now. So he's not... He, uh, I do probably think he's part of the problem. Maguire is definitely part of the problem. These, these senior players who have been at the club for a long time who've been established professionals for a long time, they aren't doing enough, and Luke Shaw's one of them. So maybe half, half a green box. Alex Tellez, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't care. wan -Bissaka? No, I don't think wan has done enough. Brandon Williams? No. Twan Zebe? Yeah, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be sad to see him go, actually, on a permanent deal. Yeah, I would be. I think Twan Zebe's Really, a really good set of Ten and Mengi. Yeah, you're damn right I would be. I think Ten and Mengi, he's got a great career ahead of him. I'd be sad to see the back of both of them if either of them were to leave Manchester United. But you'll realise by the end of this video that, my God, there are so many that I personally wouldn't be sad to see the back of a Manchester United. Paul Popper? No. I wouldn't be sad. Paul Popper, this whole situation with Paul Popper, I'm, I'm bored of that circus. I want Manchester United to move on. He won't sign that contract. Cool. I won't support you. One matter? Yeah, I would be. Not in, a, not, in a, not in a sort of way that I don't think he should leave. But I'd definitely be sad to see the back of matter. And I hope he 
whenever he does leave, I hope he comes back to Manchester United in an ambassadorial role for sure. Lingard, no. Lingard's given his whole career to Manchester United so far, apart from the loan spells. And I wish him the best of luck. But Manchester United going forward, it's without Jesse Lingard. I wouldn't be sad if he left. Andres Pereira, no. That ship's already sailed. He's already basically left. Although it's not permanent just yet anyway. Ahmad, yeah, it would be. I absolutely would be. I think Ahmad, clearly... Our scouts saw something in Ahmed. We paid like 40 million for for a youngster that hasn't really played any Serie A first team football. He's been injured this year. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. Now, Fred is one that's going to definitely split opinion. I don't think I'd be sad to see the back of Fred if we replaced him properly, but Manchester United never replaced properly and we haven't invested in our midfield properly. So I'm not here saying that we should be shipping Fred out because we could we need reinforcements in midfield. Not letting players go. Although maybe I disagree when I'm saying that with Matic, so a bit bit of a hypocrite, but mm. Yeah, Fred's making me sit on the fence. I mean not really, not actually, but I don't know. I'm moving on from him. I'm moving on from Fred. It's confusing me. Bruno, I'm you're damn straight there. Probably. I think you could argue he's the most important player inside this whole squad. <clears throat> what Bruno did for this club when he came in in that January we were in the mud and he was the person who dragged us out of the mud so yeah I would be sad massively sad to see the back of him uh, Palistri uh, you'd always be sad to see a, a youngster leave the club without fulfilling their potential so yeah I suppose you would be Matic no I wouldn't be at this point Donny no I wouldn't be James Garner yeah I suppose I would be I mean, honest, I think he's doing well, well out at Nottingham Forest. But, but again, it, it wouldn't really train, transform the fortunes of Manchester United, whether or not he stays or goes. I personally, I would be, I would keep McTominay. I, 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 I'd be sad to see the back of McTominay. I know he's got so many detractors and people love pointing out the flaws in his game. But hey, man, he's got the attitude and work rate. And that's just something that Manchester United do not have. And I would be sad to see the back of him. And yeah, you're damn straight. I'd be sad to see the back of Hannibal. My word. I reckon he's going to be a great, great footballer. That's a terrible box. Let me move backwards. I think he's going to be a, a fantastic, fantastic footballer. And I'm really, really excited to see how Hannibal gets on. Hopefully in a Manchester United shirt anyway. And then we head down to our strikers. Yeah. Ronaldo is the greatest player of all time. Greatest goal scorer of all time without a shadow of a doubt. And of course you can have the argument about whether he's the greatest player. But yeah, I don't even need to explain that one. And when it comes on to Martial, no. I want Martial to leave the club and I think he's, at, I think he's now poisonous around the club because of what's happened with his agent speaking to the press instead of speaking to Ragnick with everything that's now going on and forcing fans to choose between Believing a player or believing the manager and one of them is lying is poisonous. He doesn't want to play for Manchester United. You leave the club then, fella. We'll move on. Mason Greenwood, do you know that's, that's a rhetorical question, in my opinion. Hell yeah, you would be. Edison Cavani, I'd be sad to see him leave, but he's leaving. He's leaving. He's too old. He's leaving. That's not even a question. Jaden Sancho, yeah, I would be. Absolutely, I would be. Anthony Alanga. Anthony Alanga's coming through. Anthony Alanga, the, 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 the arc of Anthony Alanga from taking advantage of the opportunity that he was given in the preseason, preparing for that opportunity by shredding himself out in the gym, putting in the hard yards during the summer because that meant that he was ready to take that opportunity when it, when it was put in front of him. And against Villa in his first start, fantastic out on the left wing. Anthony Alanga, younger players when they come through, it's why the academy is so important to Manchester United and why it always should be. Younger players, especially ones that have come through the academy, come in with a different attitude and a different approach. Of course, they've got the whole career ahead of themselves. They're hungry. They want opportunities. And they force the mentalities of the senior professionals to be questioned, to make sure that they're keeping on top of themselves because if they don't, Players like Anthony Alanga will come through and take the opportunities instead of you. That's why 
it's so important to keep all your, not all your academy players, but the best academy players. Shoda Shuratira, yeah, absolutely. I think he's been quite impressive in, in his game time that he's got, but he seems very... Of course, you don't have to be massively physically developed. You saw what happened with Paul Scholes when he came through. But Shoda Shuratira didn't seem quite ready for the Premier League. So I think maybe a lone spell or two for him would be very good. But yeah, and then Tahith Chong. I don't think I'd be too sad to see, the, to see Tahith Chong leave. I just don't think it's worked out properly for him, but he was impressive out. He was impressing, sorry, out on loan at Birmingham before he got his injury. So hopefully he goes out and enjoys another spell there. But I wouldn't be too sad if he was to leave the club. So if we're looking at this list here, right, and we're looking at senior professionals, Roy Keane over here, he was discussing what players he would keep at Manchester United. And he could only name three off the top of his head. Bruno Fernandes, David De Gea, and Cristiano Ronaldo. What players would do I think... I think these are the players that I think if they left Manchester United that we might be slightly worse off for it. All the, all the ones I haven't highlighted, I think Manchester United could replace them quite easily and move forward quite quickly. I think that's, I think that's what I'm describing. Even I'm a bit confused. David De Gea and Henderson. I'd be sad to see either of them two leave the club. Maybe De Gea will be moved on this summer. We'll see. Grant Heaton, irrelevant. Irrelevant, both of them. Um, Lindelof by Jones and Maguire. I honestly think that United could shift any of those on and we wouldn't bat an eyelid as a fan base. I've, I've said Varane and Shaw. Am I being unfair on Delot and Tellez? Maybe I am. Maybe I am here, especially with given how um, Tellez has been playing, uh, how Tellez played against Villa. So maybe I'm being a little bit unfair there. But I just think that we could move those on. And I think you could have that argument about Luke Shaw as well, given that he's a senior professional. Uh, Brandon Williams, he's been out on loan. I don't think Brandon Williams is good enough for Manchester United. I just haven't seen that step up when he got the opportunity in the first team. wan -Bissaka. yeah, I think United could move him on and bring someone else in, no problem. Twanzebe and Mengi, I would like to see us keep both of those. But this isn't a keep or sell video. This is about attitudes and applications, right? That's what I'm talking about, uh, which is where... I'm a bit of a hypocrite when I'm speaking about Luke Shaw because I think he's very much a guilty party of not applying himself enough this season. Paul Pogba, Jesse Lingard, Pereira, Fred, Matic, Van der Beek. I just don't think there's that many players. Sorry, I'm tapping this now. I don't, don't think there's a, that many players inside this squad that you can just look at and just fully trust. And I suppose that's what this video is about, man. That's what Keane's going on about. That's what Keane str is struggling with so much. Because when you go down to the forwards, you can't trust Martial as far as you can throw him right now. Cavani's leaving. Chong. I think I'm happier with the forwards than I am with any other position on the pitch, I suppose. And that's really saying much because we're not scoring that much this season whatsoever. And there's still, there's definitely problems there too. But Roy Keane's initial reaction. Let's watch that again. Roy Keane's initial reaction here says everything as far as I'm concerned. When he was asked about what players he keep at the club. You go, lads. How many would you rely on in that squad when you look at it right now? Oh, in the whole squad. How many would I keep, you mean? Mm. Who'd you build around? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. He just doesn't know. He doesn't know names that immediately jump to his mind that he goes, you know what, I can rely on that player. And herein lies the problem for Manchester United right now. We have a squad full of quality. How much of that quality can you truly, truly rely on? And maybe that's where I was wrong with, with putting Luke Shaw uh, in that list. And maybe I was wrong to not include Fred in that list. But I'm just, I want to know your opinions here because I think it's a really important conversation that we continue to have. Whether or not the players you, you feel are at full right now whether, whether or not you think it's uh, Ragnik who's at fault right now. There's, there's a lot of conversations to be had and we need to keep having them as fans. And that's why I did a reaction video to Roy Keane's comments and what he said after that two-all draw against Villa. Villa, sorry. But let me know what you think in the comments as always. Look, if you would, consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing to United People's TV. I'm back now doing regular videos, at least Monday to Friday anyway. Take it easy, everybody. And please let me know what you think in the comments.